Hi viewers, welcome to our tutorial channel. Today our topic is statistics. Here we are going to discuss fundamental concept of statistics. We have already given a uh, part 1. Here we are discussing a part 2. Now, let us first discuss about tabulation. This meaning of tabulation. A tabulation it is a systematic and logical presentation of numeric data in rows and columns to facilitate comparison and statistical analysis. It facilitates comparison by bringing related information close to each other and helps in further statistical analysis and interpretation. So that means when data is collected for statistical use, normally a mass data is collected. So here we are talking about statistics. Statistics means we are doing a work with data. Okay. Now, such data is logically presented in rows and columns in such a manner so that it helps us to take decision and make comparison okay hence we can analyze our data according to our needs now uh, what is the in other words the method of placing organized data into a tabular form is called as tabulation so when we organize data into a tabular form, the table format, this form is called as tabulations, okay? So, it may be this uh, tabular form, it may be complex, double or simple depending upon the nature of categorization. So, normally classified data are arranged in forms of rows and columns because in tables they have some rows and they have some columns so that we can easily compare them with each other and hence it is useful for analyzing statistical data okay now let us discuss the major objectives of tabulation. There are five major objectives of tabulation. First, to simplify the complex data. Tabulation reduces the bulk of information that is raw data in a simplified and meaningful form so that it could be easily by a common man in less time. So what is this? That means tabulation reduces the bulk of information into precise format of rows and columns and hence the useful data can be understood at a single glance. Okay. Second one, to bring out essential features of the data. Tabulation brings out the chief or main characteristic of data. It presents facts clearly and precisely without textual explanation. Okay. Now the third one, to facilitate comparison. Presentation of data in row and column is helpful in simultaneous detailed comparison on the basis of several parameters. Now, number four, 
to facilitate statistical analysis. Table serve as the best source of organized data for further statistical analysis. The tasks of computing average, dispersion, correlation, etc. becomes easier if data is presented in the form of table. Number five, the last one, saving of space. It re reduces the space. A table present fact in a better way than in a textual form. Okay. And thus it saves space without sacrificing the quality and quantity of data. So saving space means this table present fact in a better way than the textual form. It saves space without sacrificing the quality and quantity of data. Now, what are the parts of an ideal table? A statistical table has at least four major parts and some other minor parts. In a picture given below, you can see there are at least four major parts and some other minor parts. The first title, second, the box head, column caption, third, the staff, row captions, number four, the body, number five, prefatory notes, number six, footnotes, number seven, source notes. Okay. Now, the title. The title is the main heading written in capitals shown at the top of the table. That means it gives an impression about what we are going to discuss. Then the second one, the box head. It is column caption. The vertical heading and subheading of the column are called columns captions. The spaces where these column headings are written is called the box head. Okay? Only the first letter of the box head is in capital letters and the remaining words must be written in lower case. Right? Number three, the Staff, that means row caption. The horizontal headings and sub headings of the row are called row caption. And the space where these rows headings are written is called the staff. Now number four, that is the body. This is the main part of the table which contains the numerical information classified with respect to row and column captions. Number five, prefatory notes. A statement given below the title and enclosed in brackets usually describe the unit of measurement and is called the prefatory notes. Now footnotes. This appear immediately below the body of the table, providing additional explanation. And last one, source notes. The source notes are given at the end of the table, indicating the source the information has been taken from. It includes the information about compiling agency applications, etc. Importance of tabulation. Under tabulation, data is divided into various parts and for each part, there are totals and subtotals. Therefore, relationship between different parts can be easily known. Since 
Data are arranged in a table with a title and a number. So, this can be easily identified and used for the required purpose. Third important, tabulation makes the data brief. Therefore, it can be easily presented in the form of graphs. And last one, tabulation presents the numerical figures in an attractive form. Now, limitation of tabulation. Tables contain only numerical data. They do not contain details. Second one, qualitative expression is not possible through table. And the third one, tables can be used by experts only to draw conclusions. Common men do not understand them properly. Now let us understand types of tabulation. There are three types of tabulation. Simple or one-way table, double or two-way table, complex or multi-way table. In the right side, we are given a picture simultaneously. So first, one-way table, one-way tabulation or simple tabulation. This table is classified with one characteristic only. That is example religion. Number two, two-way tabulations or double tabulations. This table has two characteristics furnished. Example religion and sex. And number three, multi-tabulation. This table has multiple variants in one table. Example, religion, sex, age, literacy, income, and so on. In the right side, here we can see the simple tabulation that is a one column is workshop, the number of workshop A, B, C, T, E and the number employed in the particular workshop. So there is a only one characteristic that is a number of employed. The next one double tabulations. Double tabulations means you one column define age and the other sex. This is a two way tabulation or double tabulation. And the third one multi tabulation. That means one is gender, is gender is divided also female and male. Now, education. Education is divided four parts, graduate, non-graduate, then the locations, rural, urban, semi-urban. So, there are the multivariances are there. Right? Now, let us understand frequency distribution. What is frequency distribution in statistics? After collecting data, the first task for a researcher is to organize and simplify the data so that it is possible to get a general overview of the results. This is the goal of descriptive statistical techniques. One method for simplifying and organizing data is to construct a frequency distribution. If the value of a variable, example, height, weight, etc., continues, number of students in a class, reading of a taximeter, discrete, etc., occurs twice or more in a given series of observations, 
then the number of occurrence of the value is termed as the frequency of that value right the way of tabulating a pool of data of a variable and their respective frequencies side by side is called a frequency distribution of those data okay crockston and crowden define frequency distribution as a statistical table which shows the sets of all distinct values of the variable arranged in order of magnitude either individually or in groups with their corresponding frequencies side by side frequency distribution is used to organize the collected data in table form the data could be marks scored by students temperatures of different towns points scored in a volleyball match etc let's consider an example to understand this better the following are the scores of 10 students in the gk quiz released by mr chris the scores are 15 17 20 15 20 17 17 14 14 20 20 okay so now here we can see that 15 this marks is two times 17 marks is written three times 14 marks is written two times and 20 marks written three times so let's represent these data in frequency distribution table and find out the number of students who got the same marks now the left column quiz mark and the right column number of students 15 marks got 15 marks first come two times so that means number of students two got the same marks 15 17 comes three times so how many students got the 17 marks 3 20 20 marks come three times again so how many student number of students are three 14 marks comes two times so number of students here two so it is clear so what is the frequency distribution table represents okay frequency distribution can also be shown in form of graph frequency distribution graphs this is the another way to show data that is in the form of graphs and it can be done by using a frequency distribution graph the graphs help us to understand the collected data in an easy way there is some graphical representations of a frequency distribution that can be shown using the following graph first bar graph bar graphs represent data using rectangular bars of uniform width along with equal spacing between the rectangular bars they come histogram histogram is a graphical representation of data using rectangular bars of different height in a histogram there is no space between the rectangular bars like bar diagram now pie chart a pie chart is a type of graph that visually displays data in a circular chart 
or in other words it can be say that in a pie chart there is a 360 degree circle and the number of observations on that circle is drawn in the form of angles it records data in a circular manner and then it is further divided into sectors that show a particular part of data out of the whole part right frequency polygon a frequency polygon is drawn by joining the meet points of the bars in a histogram so this is the frequency polygon that is the joining the meet points of the bars in a histogram okay now types of frequency distribution there are four types of frequency distribution under statistics which are explained below first one simple or ungrouped frequency distribution second group frequency distribution third cumulative frequency distribution and the last one relative frequency distribution here we are going to discuss frequency distribution step by step first ungrouped frequency distribution it shows the frequency of an item in each separate data value rather than groups of data values number 2 group frequency distribution in this type the data is arranged and separated into groups called class intervals the frequency of data belonging to each class interval is noted in a frequency distribution table the group frequency table shows the distribution of frequencies in class interval that means ungrouped frequency distribution shows only a separate data value whereas group frequency distribution it arrange all data as separated into groups the frequency of data belonging to each groups which called a class interval and it is noted in a frequency distribution table right third relative frequency distribution it tells the proportion of the total number of observations associated with each category last one cumulative frequency distribution it is the sum of the first frequency and all frequencies below it in a frequency distribution you have to add a value with the next value then add the sum with the next value again and so on till the last the last cumulative frequency will be the total sum of all frequencies now let us uh, for example we can explain we have value 4 in the range of 1 to 9 assume that we have value 4 in the range of 1 to 9 this 1 to 9 is a class intervals so these class intervals we have a taken value 4 again in the range of 10 to 19 say we have the value 6 hence the cumulative frequency distribution should be the first observation there are four number of values and in the second observation we have 6 so total in these two we get what we get 6 plus 4 is equal to 10 So, T is the cumulative frequency distribution. A 
up to this, it is right. Again, from 20 to 29, another class interval we are taking. Say, we have number of observation here, 5. What is the cumulative frequency distribution? Now, cumulative frequency should be here. 10, that is the previous number, plus last intervals number, that is a 5. So, this 10 plus 5 is equal to 50. And so on. Now, frequency distribution table. A frequency distribution table is a chart that shows the frequency of each of the item in a data set. Let us consider an example to understand how to make a frequency distribution table using tally mark. A jar containing bits of different colors, red, green, blue, black, Again, red, green, blue, yellow. Again, red, red, green, 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 yellow, red, green, yellow, and so on. To know the exact number of bits of each particular color, we need to what? We need to classify the bits into categorized. Because here a jar containing bits of different colors and we are confused how many times, how many balls are red color, how many bits, not a ball, how many bits in red colors, how many bits are green colors, how many bits are blue colors. So, to get the exact number of bits of each particular color, we need what? We need to classify the bits into categories. And here we need a frequency distribution table in tally marks. So here to make a frequency distribution table using tally marks. An easy way to find the number of bits of each color is to use tally marks. Here we explain picture below. The picture here we are given a table, frequency distribution table where the first column defines categorized, second column tally marks and the last column frequency, number of frequency. So first category red beads, red color. Tally marks so how many times, how many times the red color beats or how many times red uh, beats come? It is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here the frequency is 5. Green, green is 5 plus 1. It is a 6. Blue, 2. Black. 1 and yellow 3. So thus, the table so often is called a frequency distribution table. And through this table, it is clearly understand that how many times this the particular color, each particular color exact number of bits of each particular color or how many times the particular colors are come or to know the exact number of bits of each particular color. Okay? Now, the frequency distribution table is also there are two types. One is a group and other one is a ungroup frequency distribution table. Group frequency distribution table. To arrange a large number of observations or data, 
we use group frequency distribution table. In this, we form class intervals to tally the frequency for the data that belongs to that particular class interval. For example, we are taking marks obtained by 20 students in the test are as follows. 5, 10, there are different marks are given 5, 10, 20, 15, 5, 20, so on. To arrange the data in group table, we have to make first what class intervals. This is a range. We have to make a range. It is called a class interval. Thus, we will make class intervals of marks like 0 to 5, 6 to 10 and so on. Given below table shows two columns. One is of class intervals. It is the left, left side column. Marks obtained in test. And the second is of frequency. Right side column is obtained frequency. Number of students. In this, we have not used tally marks. As we counted the marks directly. Here we not use the tally. Here we just counted the marks directly. That is under 10. How many uh, students got the marks? So 4. Below 10. 11 to 15. 5 students got this mark. 16 to 20. Under this interval. 8 number of students. The total number of students is what? 20. Right? Now, ungrouped frequency distribution table. In the ungrouped frequency distribution table, we don't make class intervals. We write the accurate frequency of individual data. Previously, in case of group frequency distribution, we see that there we make a class interval. But in case of ungrouped frequency distribution, we don't make class interval. Considering the above example, here we are taking the same example, the ungrouped table will be like this. Given below, table shows two columns. One is of marks obtained in the test and the second is of frequency, that is number of students. Here, in the column marks obtained in test, there we take a particular mark, not make any, there we don't make any class intervals, not below 10, 11 to 15, it's not like that. We are taking a particular mark. Just like that, 5 marks obtained in test. How many students? Got a 3 number of students. 10 marks got 4 number of students. 15, 5 number of students. 18 marks, 4 number of students. 20 marks, 4 number of students. So that is the example of ungrouped frequency distribution table. Okay? Fine.